I know we just met. <laughs> and some of you may be out of the habit of talking to strangers. But there's this party, and I'm taking you. I'm talking to you. You. You are definitely coming to this party. <laughs> Logistics aside, let me set the scene for you. It's an intimate setting where you know almost everyone, but there are a few outliers. Let's call them friends you haven't met yet. One of the few people you don't know strikes up a conversation with you. She's clever and she's witty and she wants to know all the things. Your first love, your last love, your recent promotion, your favorite kid. She makes you feel like the only person in the room. Before you know it, you're having the best conversation of your life. In your memory, you're the life of this party. As you reflect on the evening, you think about her, the girl at the party. And although you can see exactly what she looks like, you can't remember much about her. And that's when you realize it. She kept you talking about yourself the whole time. She said very little about herself. Ladies and gentlemen, this is who I am at parties. Work, church, my son's school, pretty much everywhere. The ephemeral party girl is me. I have a bevy of conversation starters that will get even the most ardent introvert talking, all while revealing very little about myself. I'm very good at this routine because I have had a lot of practice. <laughs> I've had a lot of practice because I have something to hide. I'm a 9-11 survivor. I worked in Tower 2 and was on my way to the office when the second plane exploded. My alarm didn't go off that morning, and I was racing toward the building when that bright orange ball of fire broke through the sky. I was close enough to feel the heat of the explosion along the left side of my face. I lived with the inner turmoil of surviving without a scratch, for not knowing a single person that I watched fall from the sky. And I didn't want you to know that about me. I moved through the years that followed with what can only be described as crippling heartache and unspeakable sadness. It took a few job changes and promises from family members to never talk about that day. And within a few years, I created the ephemeral party girl. See, I wasn't sick, I wasn't injured, no one I knew died. What did I really have to be so sad about? I made a decisive choice to shed any reference to being a survivor. Super easy. All I had to do was stay home on 9-11 anniversaries. And of course, stay off social media and take anti-anxiety meds to get on planes and avoid skyscrapers. And then plot an elaborate escape plan if I couldn't avoid said skyscrapers. And never visit the Freedom Tower or the Memorial Museum. Pfft, easy, I'd be fine. But with those decisions, my chances for a healthy recovery faded because I couldn't control for all those variables for 20 plus years. And the times that I failed, well, they were scary. I made attempts to push through. In 2013, I was the keynote speaker for a 9-11 ceremony in Vicenza, Italy. I was so triggered, I almost didn't finish. I tried again at Toastmasters, but both of those engagements only left me feeling more traumatized in the end. The worst was always the questions after. I would try to do the party girl routine and shift the focus off me, but I'd be too raw, and I couldn't do it with the desired effect. By September 11th, 2019, I was back in the States after seven years in Italy. I started a great new job in Savannah that summer, and a deadline of September 11th snuck up on me. 
I was terrified. This new office was an expressly patriotic place, and I knew, I just knew that there was going to be some recognition of the day. I was terrified that I would blurt out, I was there! When no one asked. I was useless at my new job that day, and no one there knew why. And when that all-staff email reminding us never to forget arrived, I couldn't resist the urge to open it, knowing that it would send me into a spiral. I suffered. I suffered until I was so tired of feeling alone. Because if you don't share what's happening inside, if you don't express your dark fear, guess what happens? You are left with an exhaustive list of superficial relationships. And when you need somebody, nobody's there. Because nobody knows how to help you. Because nobody knows who you are. That's when I decided to ask for help. Help I was so sure I didn't need. I called Regina. She's a friend in the mental health field. She said, Mickey, you are suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. <laughs> so I laughed at Regina, right? Because I've worked in the military community for almost 10 years. I know what PTSD looks like. You know who's suffering from PTSD? Service members are suffering. Veterans are suffering. Survivors of sexual assault, they're suffering. The ephemeral party girl is not suffering, Regina. But my friend, she heard the abject fear in my voice. And for the first time, I did too. That was the beginning of my journey to heal. She recommended a therapist who specializes in EMDR, eye movement, desensitization, and reprocessing. My new therapist gave me a powerful tool. She said, take the fear, guilt, and anger you feel, and put it in a safe place where the emotions won't overwhelm you. I created an invisible jar that I keep in my bathroom under the sink. I spent the next few months getting better. And the payoffs of that journey are what I am here to share. I focused on three big ideas. One, ask for what you want. If you need something, don't hope folks know. Be open, honest, and specific about what you need. You deserve it. Second, healing begins with vulnerability. Our culture doesn't exactly reward those who are vulnerable. We're taught to fear, distrust, and have pity on those that need our help. I fought hard to distance myself from my 9-11 memories. It took some time to see that keeping that secret kept me from cultivating closure and intimacy in my life. Third, vulnerability is the key to authenticity. And authenticity is the stuff that builds healthy relationships with yourself and with others. I learned that the world experienced 9-11, not just me. We all suffered. I wasn't in the building that morning, and all 2,000 of my friends and colleagues from my company survived. That didn't mean that I didn't need help. I decided to become more than a survivor, because I am more than what I survived. We all are. Parting words. Resist the urge to stuff your pain down and numb it out. Instead, engage fully with 
all your emotions because they will light your way. Be all that you are because your journey, it has power too. And most of all, never forget, never remember who you truly are.